Are you totally different when it comes to sex and copulation? Have you judged yourself out of receiving pleasure? Have you judged yourself into receiving pleasure in certain ways and excluded other ways? Would you like to know more about what else is possible with bodies? Would you like to create confidence in the bedroom and beyond? How has your sex life or lack of it affected other areas of your life? Everyone has the potency to be a sexual superhero. Get ready. Ready to listen, sense, and play with the sexualness that is you. Now, here is the host of the Pleasure Zone, Pleasure Diva, and Body Whisperer, Milica Yelenich. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Milica Yelenich, and tonight's topic is a continuation topic. This is part two of mechanical sex and this particular title is titillating technology and in this one we are going to uncover and play with we as in my friend johnny boy and i are going to be playing with um the whole uh the whole concept of how technology has has been stepped into our lives and how now so say a hundred years ago when we didn't have internet and direct even 25 years ago when we didn't have direct hookup to the internet to watch pornography to watch all kinds of stuff um what that was like and where we're going now and some of you may be listening to this show who are maybe only i don't know maybe you are only 25 years old and you've grown up with technology your whole life this whole concept might be totally weird and foreign to you um you know where we actually had to get like VHS tapes or beta tapes that had pornography on them. I know VHS and beta are like they are so naughty, and they they used to actually have. Um, I know I remember in Toronto and in larger cities, probably in some smaller ones too. They they had um, theaters that were dedicated to pornography movies, and I just don't see those around anymore. There used to be a culture of like going out. Um, hanging out with, you know, your peeps, masturbating in public, just like Paul Rubens did. And, you know, what happened to the good old days when you could masturbate like Paul Rubens did in public? Jeez, things are changing. So welcome to this era where we can all have instant access to pornography, to online dating, and to, like, everything we ever wanted to know about sex. Because, guys... It's all at your fingertips. Even if you don't have fingertips, you can just talk into a device and it'll bring you anything you like. It's crazy, right? So if your computer has become your greatest source for finding pleasure, I wonder, I wonder what else is possible uh, for us, you know, human contact. I kind of enjoy that too. Not to knock the technology, but let's just look at tonight how um, how the technology has become so um how it's changed basically how it's changed our our um our lives and what it's invited us into and what it's kind of um invited us out of as well so i want to welcome uh mr johnny cakes to the show tonight he's going to be chatting with me that's going to be your name for tonight sir johnny cakes <laughs> and he's, uh, you get all he's the going to play with me Scrabble bag, and that's the one you pulled out. That's what came out was Johnny Cakes. <laughs> trying to hey. trying to get your name sort of in there, but not totally in there. So we're all good. <laughs> well, it's all for the greater cause. I'm just happy to be here and and uh, be in support. And now I do feel we talked about this earlier as part of my regular disclaimer. Although I do feel my advice is helpful, if it doesn't work out for you, it's this advice is for entertainment purposes only. But hopefully you get all entertained in all the, you know, jiggly bit ways. So we'll see. I think <laughs> it will. These are dry tests. So if my, if my jiggle, then it's been entertaining because my bits kind of jiggle most of the time anyway. So those jiggly <laughs> bits, we're going to be good. We're going to be just fine, kids. Actually, part of our pre-show conversation uh, via Facebook chat, uh, even though... I was trying. I was trying to have a long and drawn out conversation with Johnny Cakes the other night on a long drive home. We just didn't have that show up. But you know, <laughs> these these things can change when we can have one of those because we like talking nonsense for hours. And one of 
uh, one of the things um, that I was curious about, you know, and I kind of mentioned it to Sir Johnny Cakes, was, um, you know, I really, I'm into Star Trek, right? So, and I always have been. I think I kind of grew up with Star Trek, the original series. My uncles watched it. You know, they were watching the reruns in the late 70s, early 80s. Then I got into the next generation, and I was really, like, really intrigued by cyborgs. And, you know, they are technology. And, you know, cyborg sex. And, you know, what I, I was like, yeah, what about cyborgs and sex? And Johnny Cakes is like, well, you know, if you are a cyborg, you're connected to all the Borgs at all times. So, you know. And I was like, well, that's kind of, that's kind of like what we're actually trying to have on this planet is a connection to everything. And it's interesting how the Borgs, the Borg, the collective Borg, who are essentially cyborgs, the collective Borg are, uh, you know, in Star Trek, they are connected to each other all the time. Um, yet we we have that as a sense of something that's so mechanical and outside of us. We don't actually see it as something that's natural. That in in the way that it's viewed uh, with the Borg is that they they don't have an individuality. Somehow they've made it so that individuality um, gets removed when technology is involved. So that's that's my little spiel on individuality, technology, and there you go. Well, what you got to Borg, say about that, Mister? <laughs> well, the Borg actually reproduce by assimilation, so it's not like obviously they have the parts for sexual reproduction, but they grow and multiply by. You know, just assimilating and taking over, or not taking over, but uh, yeah, just assimilating more beings to be part of their collective uh, mm-hmm. data of consciousness at all. But Star Trek was kind of naughty in the sense of they go into the VR room and then it's like, oh, pitch me on the yeah. middle of the 17th century and I'm this and that and have these people and they'd have a little picnic on the hilltop with all these other virtual reality people and have these uh, virtual reality relationships while they're deep in space where uh, yeah they're tiny... virtual reality that was an amazing room yeah. I, I always wanted one <laughs> go ahead you know, keep going I was like, oh, you I always wanted that room. A, a virtual reality room? <laughs> yeah I yeah. did I love that room and it was always so sexy and like the costumes they had and they walk into that room and you know, the doctor would sometimes she'd be all like dressed in like sexy red dresses and I was like, Damn, look at you, Doc. Like they would they the would holo- like get away the hologram room was so amazing. Yeah, the holodeck. Yeah. Holodeck, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was oh yeah. Who wouldn't want a holodeck in their life? And that you could have any lover. You could program it to have like any lover that you ever could imagine in any scenario. And, you know, as an adult looking at the show, as a kid, when I watched the show in my early teens and stuff, and I would watch it and I I was fascinated by, you know, oh, I could have any job I wanted or I could have any party I wanted. And, you know, looking at it as an adult, it's like, wow, I could have any orgy I ever wanted. Totally save sex, right? As Keisha's saying in the chat room, this could be marketed as safe sex. Kind of like we were talking about in uh, the first episode of, mechanical sex with the robot uh the robot sex girls you know and having mm. uh safe sex with robots right i think technology well, has created a way to have safer sex it's kind yeah of and i think it's, especially if you go into the vr world because you're the creator of it i think if anything is going to allow the, the users or participants to be more consciously aware of what they're open to experiencing because they're ultimately uh, hopefully um, designing that VR fantasy um, or at very least the computer is reading um, perhaps hidden desires underneath whether or not they'll actually choose to go forth. But I think on one level it'll be kind of freaky, but also create a lot of self-awareness um, in that uh, kind of VR aspect of it all. I remember that I love referencing movies, but uh, Lawnmower Man, Stephen King, um, how they use virtual reality to take this sort of idiot of the town and made him a super genius and super conscious to the point where he could control technology. But uh, he brought a, a female companion into the uh, VR sphere and they uh, uh, could assimilate in their own uh, interesting way of it all. But 
it kind of sent her into a l- little bit of a beyond and was somewhat comatose after the whole experience. But uh, I guess I didn't see one or, more man, so I you didn't I didn't know that. Yeah, Stephen King, Jeez. great author. Yeah, yeah I have seen some some Stephen King movies, but not Lawnmower Man. I'll have no. to check that out now that there's we're virtual gonna, reality sexy well, things going on. But. I think we kind of talked about this after the show on the last episode, which was Weird Science, where the, the two right, kids yeah. programmed uh, a program and then hooked up wires to a Barbie doll of some kind and ended up creating this... Uh, conscious being who could alter reality and and change everything like that and uh, I think that would be the ultimate uh, vision I think that was kind of my uh, childhood favorite movie Um, not because I think it was everyone right (laughs) (laughs) they were geniuses and they created a a, like a sexy being to come and hang out with them who didn't want that right just amazing (laughs) I would have totally been in there. I probably would have made five or six just to have options and choice, you know? So, and yeah, it was cool. I think it was like Cindy Crawford's lips or something. I just remember it was like this conglomeration of the perfect woman and they had that come out of the, it was very cool. And people are creating these all the time, you know, these images like the computer programmers create them, um, even, even for uh, different gaming things right like you're uh the j-man's a big gamer and so and i'm not but i i'm aware of it and i'm aware that there are games out there where you know you've got these like uh sexy body people walking around in the games and you can choose to be them so you can actually create yourself in a game as something that maybe you don't get to be in reality and how many people actually like really invoke that like they really enjoy it and they almost bring that character um to, to life in a way like they breathe life into it when they're playing you know yeah just to and have technology turn you on well there is have you ever heard of the uh, visual x kit no no okay so the visual x kit um allows users to live out sexual fantasies through virtual reality so it's actually uh moldings uh, with uh, VR elements tied into it that these moldings actually um, assist you in these extreme sexual fantasies through virtual reality. Uh, so it's uh, essentially the developer behind it, uh, his name is uh, Marta uh, Daniel. Um, he essentially developed a rather elaborate sex toy come virtual reality kit uh, that she, surprisingly it was a woman, uh, beliefs could help rehabilitate, rehabilitate those uh, with extreme sexual fantasies. So it's, it's really a, it's a medical device. It's oh, wow. <laughs> but, That's pretty uh, cool. So are you talking like people who have the kind of fantasies where they have the desire to be like choked until like death almost? Like those kind of extreme fantasies, like like uh, ones that could potentially kill them or what what kind of situations um, are they being rehabilitated from? Well, as fun as a ero- autoerotic asphyxiation is, I say you should always have a spotter. Um, I do have a vision of opening up a <laughs> security company of sorts where you can go into a safe environment and uh, it's all automated and there's actually a user on the other end who can monitor your vitals. So if you are passing out, they can hit a release button or alert the authorities or something like that. Uh, sort of like the elderly, when they fall down the steps, they can hit a button. This one is if your heart stops, it releases you and medics are coming in because no one wants to die from that because um, people no, have to they just like the verge yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. And, you, and you're like <laughs> hanging there in the closet and you're not, I know this, I'm going to make light of it, but the first time I heard of autoerotic asphyxiation, I was in grade six and I was watching um, Oprah at the time. And somehow or other, I was the only person at home. So Oprah's on four o'clock. My mom's not home. And I'm watching an episode where people um, had found either their children or somebody in their family who had actually been asphyxiated from masturbation. Like they would hang themselves in the closet or whatever. A lot of times it was being hung in their rooms or in somewhere pants down, masturbating, um, and essentially like masturbating to death. So if you did have something that was like a technology that could step in 
and kind of uh, you know release you, so you don't actually have to die because it's more the the verge, uh, the intensity of the verge of death. I think that is what kill that you know the, the the it can kill them, but if it's the verge that actually turns them on, not the actual idea of dying. Mm-hmm. From what I understand, it, so, every uh, time I hear that, I think of the uh, kung fu guy who died from it. I forget his name, but you know who I'm talking about, right? From Kung Fu or Kill Bill, the actor who played Bill. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. I do, uh, oh, what was it, Kerr had like a, you know, he's actually from Ontario. Bill, oh man, now I'm going to find him, I'm going to find him on break. Kerr, uh, <laughs> something or other. But I'm pretty sure he's from Ontario because I used to see him uh, around Toronto quite often, mm-hmm. the guy that was in Kill Bill. So, yeah, crazy. So, well, actually, I didn't know that he killed himself with that, but there you go. You think being in the martial arts world at one point that I would have known that, but I didn't know that. I thought mm-hmm. he was an alcoholic, so there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, something new every the, day. Yeah, and I think the inspiration through, like, going back to the visual X kit um, is, I think to some extent, it could probably help those that perhaps have intense uh sexual fantasies or um, according to this article it explores even things like rape fantasies things like that which I'm not advocating for but there was a very controversial video game called uh, it was a sex game called the rape game um, was made quite the headline so I was kind of like well what's it all about so anyways played it in 20 minutes I remember um, here yeah I remember hearing yeah. about that yeah it's really and, like you know, Honestly, if it's getting it out of somebody's system and they're doing it on a video instead of doing it in real life, if it's something that that they can get it out of their system instead of maybe promoting it to like excite them to go out and do it, if they can get it out of their system and then not do it, I say go for it. No, we don't have studies on that, right? So we can't say. I, but I, I think that'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that'd be good if it can be in a virtual aspect of it all. And who knows? Maybe they virtually get caught and virtually thrown in prison and then they changes their psyche I'm like if it won't do that but that would uh, be great yeah oh wow yeah. that's that's the fun part yeah who even knew that, that that's where this conversation would head off to but you know Jay, man this is where things go when we talk so <laughs> i like it we're, we're willing to I, explore I, the I, See everything the I find it um, that whole the whole kit thing. So I guess I was aware that there are virtual reality kits out there that you can put like sensors on your body and you can play with somebody with the sensors, say yeah, via are... like an app. I've heard about those. I hadn't heard about the whole kit where you can play out fantasies, which um, I think that's brilliant. I just always thought there was two users involved, like the person receiving and the person giving. So very, that's very interesting. So thank you for, thank you for sharing. <laughs> so we have, uh, that's really funny. I think what we're going to do is uh, we're going to head to break because I want to go uh, check something out. I want to find out what that guy's name is. So we're going to go do that. We'll head to break and then we'll come back with more talk on titillating technology right after this commercial break. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation by tuning in to the Pleasure Zone radio show with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow your to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How long have you been waiting to uncloak your magic? To allow the magic within you to rise and catalyze into an extraordinary life deep down you know is possible. Live Your Magic is a two and a half day experience that will move you beyond your mind, ignite your body, and activate the magic that is you. 
If you are ready to radically tap into your desires, generate more aliveness in your body and your life, then join us at a Live Your Magic event somewhere in the world. Go to megansalito.com and click on events to learn more today. That's M-E-G-A-N-S-I-L-L-I-T-O. This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Melissa Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255. That's T-A-L-K. Or Canada, 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email at MelissaYelenich.com. Now back to the program. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Milica Yelenich, and tonight I have a friend on with me. I'm going to call him Johnny Cakes for today, or the J-Man. Um, he's actually got his own show. He's got a podcast called Caveman Crossing that's going to be launching soon. Um, very excited for him to start this project. So, yay, Caveman Crossing, which is Caveman and then X-I-N-G. So that's the kind of Caveman Crossing that is going to be. Um, you'll be able to find information there to listen to his uh, fabulous show. And he did have a show in the past, which was absolutely hilarious. And I got to do a few ads for him on that show, which was full of laughs and hilarity. And it's like advice that you could take seriously and it would probably work. And you can also laugh about it because it's freaking hilarious. Um, and I'm not sure what the new Caveman Crossing is. I just really like the energy of it. Um, and so, yes, just before we get back in the conversation, Mr. J. Man, Johnny Cakes, can you tell us a little bit about uh, Caveman Crossing? So Caveman Crossing is essentially for all those uh, knuckle draggers, um, like guys looking for more information and research on how to kind of function as reality. Because at the end of the day, we're all cavemen at heart. And uh, there's something for everyone. It's not limited to men. Um, we did have, like you said on the previous show, majority of all of our guests uh, were women. Um, and we are just there to provide information, whether it's, uh, you know, what sort of uh, ideal is for scotch or beers or how do you meet women online or what do you do when you finally have her or why is she upset? Why is her ass always cold? Things like that. Uh, so we're going to be diving into a lot of topics uh, <laughs> We're currently storyboarding a lot. Uh, we have a great team behind us, and we're looking to be launching the show here in fall 2017. So we do have a, a Facebook set up and uh, some other online ways to connect in the meantime. And like you said, if you go to Caveman Crossing with X-I-N-G, Caveman Crossing, uh, you can sign up to our newsletter, and we're going to be doing a bunch of uh, prize giveaways and and uh, a lot of fun. Uh, it's more of satire comedy as well, so we'll uh, – be diving into a lot of different things but uh, one of the things that interested me on your this particular segment for tonight um, was we were talking about online dating yes and how that's becoming more and more mainstream versus maybe 15 odd years ago in the uh, classic yahoo chat rooms <laughs> you know just how things have right. sort of developed you don't want to meet someone online but now it's like where do you need someone? Why don't you go online? You just show up. You open your computer and you get 24 penis pics and a couple masturbation videos and a whole bunch of people asking you to marry them. That's how you meet people online, guys. Now, then you got choice. And there's also all those dating sites. I've actually never used an online dating site. So really? I had put yeah never, I put I put it out there a couple maybe over a month ago because I have like zero experience with online dating. I have seen an app once twice. Uh, I watched one of my friends use Tinder when it first came out, and it was actually my cousin. And I was like, "What are you doing?" And she was sitting there like flicking her finger across, and she's like showing me. She's like, "Oh, it's Tinder. It's this online dating thing." I'm like, "You are." judging you're looking at this and in one second you're judging whether you would choose this person or not i'm like this is the most ludicrous effing thing i've ever seen that this is so full of judgment i i can't even like look at it 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 actually 
it frustrates me that people would operate from such a level of judgment. <laughs> so so I never chose that one. And I get people do, and I get people get off on it, and that Tinder is like their life, or Grinder, you know, if you're if you um, are in a man body and prefer male bodies, Grinder is your thing. I don't know that they actually have one for women who prefer women bodies, but somehow. Uh, they do called scissoring. They scissoring. Scissoring. They, that could exist. I don't know. I just made that up. But I was going to be exist, like, you know everything, Jonathan. Oh, J Man, you know like everything about like the internet, like. <laughs> So, yeah, you could make one, scissoring. Yeah. See, I'd probably go on that. Mm. I'd probably try that out for fun, just because, like, I am literally typing scissoring, dating, website, and I'm going to see what comes up here while you dive more into that. But I I know in my experience, uh, wow, it's kind of scary. I'm kind of scared that I actually typed that into Google. Um, But, uh, you know, when it comes to (laughs) online dating, um, like I remember back being like when we first had internet and, and dialing up and with a 386 computer and just kind of exploring different things and talking to people, the concept of even engaging people online and um, was kind of neat and fascinating. And you met a lot of interesting people. And even back then there was sort of a virtual fantasy sex aspect to it all which is like the standard like hey what's your asl and oh we got a good dialogue here do you want to play with our imaginations and cyber uh but nowadays like you said as we go more into virtual reality and maybe there's that ability where it's like hey here's a virtual we hop in our virtual kits and we go to a virtual holodeck space of sorts and then sort of uh explore that reality so it'd be kind of interesting where it goes but i know for those that are looking into going to online dating um a couple quick tips for you uh i think the big one is depending on how serious you want to go into it i would almost encourage guys to set up a fake dating uh profile where they just find some random free image of a, a woman and set up a fake account and a fake email and things like that. And just see what kind of messages these women are getting on this website. Because that's going to give you some insights of what everyone else is doing. Uh, but uh, you can almost use <laughs> that like to your that. I've never, I've never done that. I was going to say, are you using my face as a fake face for these profiles? I'm a little upset. Upset. And if you I are... Spent- <laughs> if you are, are we doing well? Like, are we getting hit? Or no? Uh, I think there's a lot of swipes. I forget on Tinder. Is it swipe left good or swipe right? I don't know. Okay. Well, um, you are going to be me. Like, just let me know. And I, like, want to know how we're doing, okay? Actually, when I was in Sweden, I met a guy who has a fake uh, online personality where it's this woman. Actually, has images. And what he does is he leverages his social media as this fake woman to get himself into these nightclubs and into these bars because through Instagram and through uh, Twitter, he'll message the general manager or the bouncers of these clubs to say, hey, my cousin is in town and could you get him into your club? So he's leveraging this female personality to get in and he'll take pictures. So people actually believe it's real. It's kind of borderline catfishing if if, uh, you know that one. Wow. What brilliant. That's so brilliant. Yeah. So, I like it. Is he is he somebody that uh, we know? Is he in Axe consciousness by any chance? Uh, no, no. But uh, I can. Okay. Pro- I, if you ever want to interview him, I could probably track him down through. Uh, oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. I was just curious. Although I don't want to give up his rap. So. No, no, no. We don't have to give up his name. We just his voice, yeah. you know. But that's so that's so cool. That's so brilliant, and how we can use technology to seduce in things into our lives that. You know, he's seducing possibilities into his life by getting um, into clubs or getting attention or getting whatever that is. Um, and I know for sure there are like a million fake profiles out there because every man who asked me to marry him on Facebook um, is somehow in uh, Saudi. Usually they're in Saudi Arabia. They're usually on a peacekeeping mission of some sort. Uh, or they're in Iran or Iraq on a peacekeeping mission, which all of this cracks me up. And they're always widows, and they always have at least one child. 
So, and it's fascinating to me because they're usually somewhere mid 40s to 50s or something like that, or they're uh, in their early, early 30s. And uh, it's always like, wow. So, so tell me about your wife. And then they send a standard. It comes out in like a copy paste, right? Because it's about 25 seconds later and you get 25 lines of information about the wife. She died of cancer. It was in her left breast. And it's very detailed and hilarious. And almost all of them have the same thing that the wife died of cancer. And I said, wow, isn't it amazing? I'm actually going to set up a group for all you guys because I think you guys need some support. You guys are sad and lonely. And you all seem to be in the same area, but you haven't met each other. So I'm going to create a support group for you guys. I'm going to add you in there. And when I do add you in there, then, um, you know, you guys can chat with each other about your shit and your issues because I'm not interested. So I haven't had any of them agree to be part of that group, but uh, I offer all the time. So online fake profiles, ask and use your awareness because (laughs) so many people are using that. But I like your method just to see what are the other people saying and maybe not say stuff that sounds stupid. Well, it's kind of interesting, too. Um, A couple of people I know, they were going to be doing a dating coaching seminars, things like that. So they went about and they did that steps. And I'd say within the first 15 minutes, they pretty much got a dick pic, like right off the bat. Uh, So it happens a lot. Um, I think if you are looking to meet people online, it's as a guy, it's probably a numbers game, you know, for every 100 you sent out. Uh, you can probably boil it down to through back and forth. uh, You know, eventually you'll, you'll progress from emails to maybe a phone call conversation to maybe a coffee to maybe something beyond that. And and it's really paying attention uh, to keeping messages short, uh, really reading the profile aspect of it all and uh, just kind of, like you said, it's like a full-time job. You just got to go on the volume aspect. Um, but I think nowadays with Tinder, uh, you're absolutely right. You only have a quick second. There's a picture, yes, no, left, right, left, right. Um, I thought it'd be kind of funny as an experiment, go on Tinder and just literally say yes to everyone and just see who says oh yes my God, back. Funny. I think that'd be interesting. I don't but know. I, I'm not are, sure you actually, would... are you actually on Tinder? Like, are you, you're, you are on Tinder, yeah? Or no? I was on a... Like a... Uh, a, a, a spiritual adventure the other month and then through conversation tinder came up as like <laughs> uh cause the woman i was uh staying with in uh, uh my little weekend adventure out there um she was on tinder and she would actually use tinder to meet guys for some level so she wouldn't have sex with them but she would use it to go meet people to go hiking uh or go on you know go to the lake or go on micro adventures which I don't know. I was kind of mixed feelings with her about that. Uh, now, I didn't meet her through Tinder. I met her in person at a, an event. Mm. But it was You're so old kind school. of funny. <laughs> meet people. Well, I was the bartender at the event, so it was kind of nice because eventually people have to come to you. So as soon as I noticed them, I was just uh, like, I, I remember you were getting in trouble for that because you were, yeah, yeah, I remember that story. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that's a trouble story. Yeah. But that's okay. <laughs> that's it. Majestic evening, and for legality reasons, we can't talk about it anymore. But, you know, <laughs> it it's, uh, I did actually uh, pull up Scissor. There is actually a, da- a female version of Tinder called Scissor. Just no O. It's uh, S-E-I-S-S-R. That uh, is freaking crazy. And you, yeah. that just it's a lesbian popped into your head. App. Yeah. Damn it. Lesbian dating app where women can connect, share, and chat about their local cultural interests and relationship needs. You know, so Honestly, darling, I think like, what 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 made you think of the word scissor that somehow that would be related to a lesbian site? Like maybe I'm not in the lesbian culture enough, but I, I don't know. What does it mean? Like I need explanation. I think the art of scissoring is when two women kind of come together and it's like their legs almost look like scissors. I actually. OK, uh, that's it. Part. Yeah, I got it's it called part. scissoring. OK. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm getting in trouble from the producer because she has experience in that area and she's like laughing at me. I'm like I'm so sorry, Keisha. I've only been with one woman once. I don't have a lot of experience in that area. Thanks I, I for laughing, laughing at me. <laughs> the art 
I, I don't know why. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I meet yourself. You know, I'm sure she it. has. I'm sure she could tell us all about scissoring <laughs> if she wanted to. <laughs> she may be shy about Stay that. Stay tuned next week. <laughs> I, uh, Keisha does I, a know, show all about scissoring. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So get it now. I'm like, I'm so daft. I'm so sorry. I don't know the lingo. Just like I had Corey yeah, Michelle on my like show a about a year and a half years show. ago. I'm fairly sure. Uh, and I'm such, and I have a sex talk radio show, and I don't know half the lingo. But Corey Michelle was on a couple years ago, or some two years ago, mm. uh, when she started talking about unicorns a lot, and she's like something something about being a unicorn and i'm like yeah cool and she's like do you know what i'm talking about i'm like unicorns and magic and she's like no it's like the single person who goes in to uh sex swaps to like uh swingers parties and when you're solo as a person going into a swingers event you're called a unicorn and i was like oh I didn't know. Because everyone desires I'm, you. I got it. Majestic. Yeah, I guess it's because you're majestic and you're uni. You're by yourself. But if you guys have lingo that I should be aware of, like scissoring, please freaking let me know so I can be in the know. And then I don't have to like have Keisha laughing at me about that. Because it wasn't until she actually wrote, are you willing really asking him that, that I got the image kind of in my head. And then you explained it. And then I was like, yeah, I'm daft. Cool. How's it get any better than that? <laughs> so <laughs> tell me more because I may not uh, know these things. You know, I'm only pre off. Oh, like, little little scissoring. Like, Go to the rocks. Play with some paper. There you go. Um, oh man, <laughs> oh, you're funny. That's horrible. Oh, oh funny. Uh, ha ha ha. Uh, <laughs> so it's, uh, <laughs> oh, but you know, it it has shifted a lot. Like yeah, I remember, you know, like you said, uh, um you know, going back to some level of uh, uh, video games and, and just how that's kind of progressing this uh, sexual culture as well. But I remember even back in 1980s with Sierra games where you can kind of control a figure and be like moving them around and say, oh, drop your clothes and it's all pixelated. And guys are like, oh, my God. Or Leisure Suit Larry was probably the first uh, more mainstream yeah. game where the guy was sort of playing around and you had to go through these challenges and competitions to uh, – uh, advance the plot line, so it's it's an interesting market. Um, needless to say, so it was like it was porn, but as a game. Yeah, there was some level of entertainment value, um, That's but cool. it's one of those called classic games uh, of it all. I thought I've heard of Leisure Larry, but I thought it was a joke. I didn't know it was. For oh, real. really? Yeah, yeah, I didn't know it was an actual. I thought it was just like a joke that somebody made up. That's been like a an urban legend. So <laughs> that's funny that it's actually real. Something I haven't I, I researched. There you go. Player. I, I think it's a great resource, educational tool for those looking to uh, uh, test their skills, things like that. You know, um, I, a gentleman I know. He just moved back to Ontario. Uh, in Thunder Bay, when I first met him, I literally said, it's like, you literally are like a loser. Like, we need to get you in a polo shirt, but you look like a Leisure Suit Larry character. Just <laughs> something about his... I don't know. He said it was the first time he ever heard that. And I started pointing out. I literally pulled up a picture and I showed it to him. And I'm just like, Michael, this is you. <laughs> like, you need to get familiar oh, with this. Oh, my God. But, uh, yeah. Um, what a compliment. But, you are just yeah. like Leisure Suit Larry. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome and uh, I was in the I'll... 80s playing dress Barbie you know in the dress Barbie game but you were playing Leisure Suit Larry that's freaking awesome uh, so. you were like five play playing Leisure Suit yeah. Larry <laughs> that's all. you played the Barbie game too thank god I was yeah. not alone on that yeah whole, so, whole group of yeah Oh my, what a conversation. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew that, oh, oh, the things. And by the way, just because the last break, I did check it out. His name was David Car Carradine. And I kept on thinking Kardashian, but it's not a Kardashian. David Carradine, he was the one that was found dead in the closet of a Bangkok hotel room with a cord wrapped around his neck and genitals. Um, that's what you know, led the Thai police to suspect his death was not a suicide, but an accident 
resulting from dangerous sex practices. So for those of you who are like, what was the guy's name? Darn it. That was his name. So do you think we're going to head to Britain. Do you think What's that, still paid out? Do you think insurance still paid out? Because yeah, it's because not suicide it's deemed as an accident. So is that the loophole? You know, yeah. he didn't hang but himself. But you still he... get it. If you so here's the deal with insurance, at least the insurance I have with Sun Life is that if you've had the policy for more than one year, it's it's an effect. Like they can still get the money. Um, and same with Primerica, I had a uh, had a life insurance with them too. As long as you've had your policy for a year, they will pay out for suicide. So accident so, so or suicide. You're saying you have yeah. autoerotic expectation insurance on your husband. Does it pay out well? Yes. And yeah, we'll get like four hundred. Yeah. So, <laughs> Keisha, are there so if I do it, no. or if Mike masturbates himself and asphyxiates himself, which I don't see him doing that, but if he does, we're covered. We're good. It's all good. Whenever I go to do anything that he thinks is dangerous, he's like, "That's okay. We have a we have a life insurance policy. We're all good. You can go Let me jump just off." Call the broker cliff. first before I do this. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, you're covered. Can I get that in writing, please? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. My my husband just said I could do it because it's okay. He'll get money. <laughs> no, <laughs> whatever. Some people are like, that's so rude. And we just think it's funny. So we're sick. It's all good. So we're going to we're gonna head to break. And when we come back, more titillating technology for you guys right after this commercial break. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation by tuning in to the Pleasure Zone radio show with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow your to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How long have you been waiting to uncloak your magic? To allow the magic within you to rise and catalyze into an extraordinary life deep down you know is possible. Live Your Magic is a two and a half day experience that will move you beyond your mind, ignite your body and activate the magic that is you. If you are ready to radically tap into your desires, generate more aliveness in your body and your life, then join us at a Live Your Magic event somewhere in the world. Go to megansolito.com and click on events to learn more today. That's M-E-G-A-N-S-I-L-L-I-T-O. This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255. That's T-A-L-K. Or Canada, 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email at MilicaYelenich.com. Now back to the program. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Millie Tsiyelanich, and tonight our topic is titillating technology. Titillating. I like the word tit, and I try and use it in as many things as possible, so titillating is uh, pretty great. And uh, we just found out from our producer that um, we are sort of entertaining and that she's fairly honest about that. So we're really glad that she's fairly honest not totally honest, but fairly honest. That's awesome. Uh, she's she's uh, telling and, us what we and required to hear. I'm, I'm pretty. Yeah, excited. that's what it is. And, um, and I thought she was a faker, and she's, she's not even going to address that because after the whole scissoring conversation, she doesn't want to reveal anything right now. So, 
she doesn't bake it, and she knows about scissoring. Just so you guys know, that is what we know about Keisha right now. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks, Keisha Cakes. <laughs> and what, what, why I'm bringing up Keisha is because Keisha's our human connection tonight. She's on the show, and she's interacting with us. And, you know, a lot of what's going on um, in the world with this technology is that, you know, not just from um, a work standpoint, you know, people Skyping for conversations, we're trying to have a human connection with video, but there's still something to be said for like human contact too, touch, right? And as much as technology might be able to mimic that now and in the future, and maybe in a really amazing way, I still think, and I still get that I personally prefer human contact over technology. So so J Man, Mr. Johnny Cakes, what what is um what do you sense on that? Like what you know, I'm sure it's gonna be a mixed bag of people who maybe they don't prefer people because they don't want to have to deal with stuff with people. But what do you what's your take on that? I think there's a lot of people that agree with you that they just don't want to deal with people. They like the idea of getting lost in a a cyber based reality um, to kind of have that emotional connection. Um, But I think that is going to be a big thing too, getting to a space where literally people are saying hello to animals, but not really the person or even engaging um, people or looking them in the eyes creates that level of unease um, compared to seeking out that real connection. Um, I think that's where things like uh, snuggle parties on Meetup and things like that are, are starting to take off just so people can have that craving of a of physical connection um, with people or even hiring, um, going back to the snuggle ones, hiring the, what are those people come, called where they come to your house and you snuggle them? Yeah, like snuggle the, pro- the snuggle partners or uh, huggers. Like there's oh, actually a group, Not yeah, prostitutes. snuggle parties. Not prostitutes, but there are there are snugglers. Um, there's actually a hugging community in Toronto on Meetup, and maybe there are other Meetups. Uh, if you look on Meetup.com, but in Toronto there is a uh, cuddlers uh, professional cuddlers group, and you can go. They have Meetups where um, you know people like groups of people can and can cuddle. And yes, yeah, some of them are called cuddle therapists, snugglers, mm-hmm. cuddle. Cuddle sessions, um, yeah, human contact. We know that people are craving it so much that people are getting paid to hug, which used to just be what your, you know, your family or your friends could do for you, and now it's like you got to pay for that. So interesting, right? And I, I have um, actually done sessions with people who have asked just for the hug for like an hour of a hug, and it's. Um, you know it can it can give them such like an adrenaline drop so they can actually relax their body to receive and and there is something about human touch that creates that whether it's on a holographic level i don't know what level or if it's truly on the electromagnetic connection between bodies level it can be so many things um it can be quantum for all i know we could be talking about energies that that are not um, seen or felt too, so it's hard to Is that know. A new distant modality, you know, distant cuddling and distant hugging, and yeah, I think I could use like scalar waves to hug people around the world. Mm. <laughs> so it's anything's <Dang>. possible. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll start playing with that concept. If right. we can use oh. those to destroy things, why not to hug them up, right? So yeah, so. <laughs> So technology I, too, with with like the pornography and all of that too, it's like getting it. It becomes so like in your face that there's like where is the realness of where people used to just walk in the room? You know, it could be you know say 17th century France and everybody's having orgies all the time, and you could just walk by it. I think that would be more fun and interesting than watching the videos. But that's just me. Yeah, it's. Definitely, uh, like you said, uh, nowadays in this 20th odd century is 
finding these underground communities where it is more of a, a norm. But I know to some extent, like I said, I've, I've talked to a few women about this over this last summer um, who really have no interest in things like even holding hands with their partner or um, really that sense of connection, even though they kind of want it. But I don't know. They're more, I don't know, the, the sense of being obligated to engage, I think, is the uh, what that a lot of that boils down to. But you know, there's definitely is that level of disconnect when it comes to the physical side. My theory is, if you can get to some level of getting them to hold your hands, I think you can play off that to more as an invitation for more. Um, so, you know, it's definitely a science. Play around with it. Uh, it's. Uh, I'm not saying just run out there and grab someone's hand in the grocery store, but just little <laughs> things. See if you can go home and get it on. I think maybe what you're saying is probably why, I, I like, maybe women are aware of this on some level, right? They're like, if I hold his hand, it's going to equal sex. And what if just holding the hand more often would actually give the person the energy that they're looking for in terms of attention or physical feedback or feeling attractive that then well, every time you hold hands, it doesn't have to equal, you know, copulation. Guys, it, it there's guys out there that do that. They do the whole, it's called the stranger or even stranger where they, uh, they sit on their hand or they make their hand or their arm go really numb. And then they proceed to masturbate because it feels like someone else's hand. You know, there's like the guys. Wow. Do this. Yeah. Wow. So, what's that? Dude, you teach me so much that I that that's why that's why I adore you. I learned the craziest shit from you. I thought I already had a crazy brain and knew a lot of weird shit until I met you. And then I'm like, man, J man, you got the craziest brain of anybody I know. So I always yeah. enjoy our conversations. And and you <laughs> would have to tell me about people sitting on their hands making it numb so they would feel like somebody else is masturbating them. That's cool. <laughs> well, I haven't tried is, that actually. I don't know. Would they lose the ability to grip? I don't know. I find when my arm gets numb, sometimes I can't even make a clasp. I don't know. That's just yeah. Me. Yeah. Mm. I I don't but know. Do women do that too, or I haven't tried it, so I don't know. But that's curious. <laughs> we'll have to pit out. Now a, I'm going a, to. A, I'm gonna. So I'll make a video about it. There you go. <laughs> this is it, <laughs> guys. That's just the ring, and this is numb hand masturbation, guys. This is what we're doing today. And no, for those of you listening uh, and you're wondering, when are those videos coming out? It's a joke. Okay, cool, as long as we're clear on that. <laughs> However, so. if you want to prepay for your copy, well, we're not going to stop <laughs> you. Give up your PayPal. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> you get We've got to pay for it. We'll ask for a lot of money, and then we'll produce those videos. Maybe. <laughs> so, uh, we've got about a minute left until we're done the show. I just wanted to super uh, say thank you for this crazy conversation. I always have fun when you're on this show. Um, I think it was hilarious. For those of you guys who haven't listened to any of the shows uh, Johnny Cakes has been on before, we did one, I think it was in 2016, maybe, mm -hmm. March of 2016 for uh, Blowjob, Stakes and Blowjobs Day, which was March 14th that year. So if you haven't listened to that, have a listen. Also, two weeks ago, uh, he joined me for Mechanical Sex Part 1, where we talked about sex robots and his possible new venture in having a um, a whorehouse with sex robots. And then this week's venture of, you know, um, saving people from dying with uh, asphyxiation and masturbation. Uh, I think, you know, you are always looking to contribute to the planet and the world. And I just want to thank you for all your crazy ideas of ways you can you, you do just, that. My muse, it, you, you bring it up <laughs> and out. Of it. And I like to gift it these needs of possibilities, especially on your uh, tummy and chest. So, but thank you for having me. I love being on you. And when thank I'm not catfishing you. your chat room. Awesome.
Thank you for choosing to listen to The Pleasure Zone. Milica Yelenich will return next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspireChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.